Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Dami K in here, of course. The Dami K Show on FireTelevision.com. The Dami K Show.com. This war in Russia, completely out of control. It is threatening the food supply. <laughs> this war is in the bread basket, the bread basket of the world. All right. So Russian tanks, missiles, besieging Ukraine. This is what we're dealing with. In addition to uh, the innocent people that are uh, in danger, the Russian attacks are threatening the food supply, threatening the livelihood of folks in Africa, Asia, and Europe, folks that rely on the fertile grounds, the, the farmlands of the Black Sea region, which is known as the breadbasket of the world. What's the breadbasket? Your stomach, right? <laughs> the breadbasket, uh, very important. So you have Ukrainian farmers in the breadbasket of the world who have been forced to neglect their fields, neglect the crops, as millions flee, fight, and try to stay alive. Shemaine Diamond K, of course, in here, The Diamond K Show, on FireTelevision.com, TheDiamondKShow.com. Putin is out of control. And for the reason of uh, they're scared of World War III, they just let this guy run amok. Here's, here's how I look at his threats, Putin, because that's what they're, they're threats. And he has been able to successfully bluff the world. Yes, Russia has nuclear weapons. Oh, but, but understand this. America, we have nuclear weapons also. And as much as y'all try to act like something's wrong with this, this boy ain't crazy. He knows we have nuclear weapons, but he knows the playbook because all the politicians go by the same playbook. Every situation, same playbook. The generals, they all had the same schooling. They all go to the same playbook. And this guy understands that. Putin understands that. My thing is this. Yeah, whenever he does this tough talk with nuclear weapons, okay, we got nuclear weapons too. What do you want to do, right? What do you want to do? You want to do something? Then that's, that means everybody, everybody goes. And even if he was that crazy, some Russian is going to stop him from doing it, right? He ain't launching no nuclear weapons to destroy the world. He's not going to do it. Because everybody ain't crazy. Even if he is crazy, everybody ain't crazy. And one of the Russian higher-ups will stop him. The world is not going to end because Vladimir Putin is going to pull the trigger. Because if, if he was so hell-bent on ending the world, he wouldn't be trying to get into Ukraine and take over in the breadbasket of the world. The gas station is almost closed. He's thinking about the next moves. What are the next moves? He's trying to take over in Ukraine. Right? So you have ports that are shut down. These ports send wheat and other food staples worldwide. Food prices are getting ready to skyrocket. But everybody's all scared of Putin. You ain't the only person that has nuclear weapons. I could see if he was the only one that had them. We got them too. And other countries have them. Other allies have them. But you're also scared of this guy. There are worries that Russia, another, you know, agricultural powerhouse, could have its grain exports upended by these sanctions. I think that we need to sanction Russia into uh, a complete standstill. And then one of the Russian higher-ups can get in there and do the Lord's work. 
with regards to Putin. Now, uh, there have not yet been any global disruptions. The wheat supply is okay. Now, prices have surged about 55% in a week before the invasion amid concerns about what could happen next. Now, if this war is prolonged, countries that rely on affordable wheat exports from Ukraine are going to face shortages probably this summer. Oh, then, you know, then we might be in trouble. <laughs> that, that could create some food insecurity and throw people into poverty in places like Egypt, places like Lebanon. These are locations that are dominated. The diets of, of folks in these regions are dominated by government bread. So if these uh, food, sec food insecurity situations are created because of a prolonged war, uh, this is really, really going to cause some problems. So in Europe, officials are preparing for potential shortages. Now, we're talking about higher prices for livestock feed. That could mean more expensive meat and dairy if farmers are forced to pass the cost along to consumers. And they're going to do that if, if, if their prices go up. They are going to pass uh, pass that uh, expense along. Now, Russia and Ukraine combine for nearly a third of the world's wheat and barley exports. Many people didn't know that. That's major. That's major. Ukraine is also a major supplier of corn and the global leader in sunflower oil, which is used in food processing. The war could reduce food supplies just when prices are at their highest levels since 2011. Something needs to be done about President Putin. Either y'all going to make him stop, right? Or he has to be stopped. But this, this uh, 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 bowing and, and, and scraping like Trump does, to Putin has to end. But I guess the world has not felt enough pain yet. I guess we have not had our hands forced enough. But a prolonged conflict in this region would have a big impact. A big impact, like, like a big impact, okay? <laughs> Millions rely on the bread made from Ukrainian grain. Millions rely on that just to survive, right? About a third of the people living in poverty need it. But I know, you know, the, the higher ups could care less about people living in poverty. As we see in this country, in America, folks at the, you know, upper echelon don't pay attention to stuff unless it affects them. So it might be a while before this affects uh, the higher up. But wars mean shortages. Shortages mean prices are going up. Prices are going up with the prolonged war. So um, I, I just, I don't understand why. I mean, I guess I do understand why. It's fear. It's fear. It's weakness. The left has it. The right has it. But the left, <laughs> the left really has it. Talking about Democrats. Fear. Fear. What are the Republicans going to do? What are they going to say? What is, you know, it, it, it's, it's always fear. Right? Fear is healthy unless it controls everything that you do or don't do. Fear can be healthy or fear can be unhealthy. If fear is used as a motivating factor, that's healthy. What's happening in Ukraine, this, uh, this dictator posing as a president, 
that Donald Trump thinks is so smart. He is. <laughs> he's a bully. He's a murderer. He's a war criminal. Republicans supposed to be the law and order folks. The, the leader of your party is hailing a war criminal. A war criminal. Russian attacks are halting plans to evacuate Ukrainian civilians. But Republicans, the leader of your party, the leader of your party says that this war criminal is smart. He's a genius. This is the guy that y'all are, are, are standing up for. This is the one that y'all bow down to. And when you look at who he bows down to, it's disgusting. So Russian forces intensify shelling in cities in Ukraine's center, the north, the south. They want help. They want more help. And uh, the Ukrainian leader, the president, is urging his people to fight in the streets. These folks are patriots. They're tough. And they're, and they're standing up. Standing up. And uh, people of the world are supporting them as best as their leaders will allow. Putin has shifted blame for the invasion, saying that Moscow's attacks could be halted only if Kiev, uh, Kiev, uh Sent, uh, ceases hostilities like they're the ones <laughs> you invaded their country this is a uh, a a strategy that's often used uh by bullies people blaming other people now um it is uh it is unfortunate because the most recent attacks uh really has you know stop the hopes that more people could escape the fighting and try to get more people out. Over a million people have left the country thus far. And uh, Russia's plan to quickly overrun the country has been <laughs> really uh, halted by fierce resistance from this uh, the, the citizens of this country. And I don't, I don't know what what the Russians are thinking, Putin is thinking, this place, even if they take it over, is not going to be easy to occupy because you have a fierce resistance that's going to constantly cause insurgents. They had to throw what, what, like the puppet regime that Putin put in there before, they overthrew that clown twice. So are you going to bring him back? These people are going to fight for their country. I do have a lot of respect for the Ukrainian people. Now, Russia has made significant advances in southern Ukraine along the coast. There was a rumored, uh, you know, sea invasion that was going to come, some, some force uh, from the water, but uh, that has just been rumored. Many uh, have, um, you know, talked about just the amateurish way or the uh, audaciousness of the uh, Russian military, the, the long, long processional bumper to bumper traffic. They just had some planes come through there and drop the bomb on them and uh, uh, missiles and, and just wipe out the uh, long supply train that they got 40, 30 miles, whatever it was. Uh, you know, but um, Russia thought that they were just going to come through there and just have their uh, quick victories has not been quick at all. Food, water, medicine, and almost all other supplies were in desperately short supply in uh, the southern port city where Russia, Russian and Ukrainian forces had agreed to an 11-hour ceasefire that would allow some civilians and wounded to be evacuated, but Russian attacks quickly closed that uh, humanitarian corridor. So they went back on the uh, ceasefire. Can't I mean you can't take them at their own word. Nobody knows what they're. Gonna, I mean you can't trust them. Public Enemy made a song about it. Can't trust it. 
a third round of talks between Russia and Ukrainian leaders is planned for today. So you have uh, President Zelensky rallying his people to remain defiant, especially in those cities occupied by Russians. Putin's trying to take this guy out. Now, let's keep in mind, this is the same Ukraine, the same place that Donald Trump was trying to withhold or, or successfully withheld weapons, defensive weapons from for this very purpose of fighting the Russians because he would not give him dirt on Joe Biden and his family. And it's laughable when Trump supporters talk about Donald Trump would have held Putin into check. Get out of here. Foolishness. Zelensky also asked the United States and NATO countries to send more planes to Ukraine. But that idea is complicated by questions about how to provide aircraft to the Ukrainian pilots. They're, they're confused. He's also urged the West to tighten its sanctions on Russia. They say, help a brother out. They're saying that the audacity of the aggressor is a clear signal that the existing sanctions are not enough. I agree with that. If the sanctions were enough, this invasion would have halted. We have to continue to help these people. Because a guy like Putin, a guy like Hitler, a guy like Napoleon, they don't just stop with one country. They continue. It's never enough for them. He's not just going to take this country and then say, all right, I'm good. They're going to take another one and then another one and then another one. That's how this mindset works for people like Putin. The Russian defense ministry also uh, alleging this and that. <laughs> they, don't, they don't provide any evidence on the stuff that they uh, allege. And they allege that the Ukrainian forces are plotting to blow up an experimental nuclear reactor and then blame it on a Russian missile strike. It doesn't even make sense. But this is the mindset that we're dealing with. The pack of lies that is echoed by Russian leaders, Putin on down. So uh, this is what we're dealing with. And as I, as I said, the breadbasket of the world, we have a fight going on that eventually will affect multiple countries in the world, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa. Multiple countries. Now, the West has broadly backed Ukraine. We've uh, offered aid, weapons, slapped Russia with uh, various sanctions. Now, no NATO troops have been sent to Ukraine, and it doesn't look like they will be. NATO troops are not going to get involved unless Russian soldiers, you know, come into some NATO countries. And the way that this military is operating, they would get whooped if they did. Russian uh, forces have made advances in uh, southern Ukraine. Ukraine's a big place, like 43 million people. It's a big place. Now, Russia has become isolated since this invasion. And they're probably looking like these hypocrites. They invade countries all the time. Right? How dare they? Yeah. TikTok announced yesterday that Russian users would not be able to post new videos or see videos shared from elsewhere in the world. The company blamed Moscow's new fake news law, quote unquote, which makes it illegal, among other things, to describe the fighting as an invasion. Netflix also cut its service to Russia, but provided no details. Facebook and Twitter have already been blocked in Russia, along with access to websites from a number of major international media outlets. TikTok is 
uh, of course, part of the Chinese tech company ByteDance. So um, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House here in America, is exploring how to further isolate Russia from the global economy. And I am happy to hear that. It needs to happen. We need to make the country feel it even more. Even more. Pelosi said yesterday that the legislation under consideration would also repeal normal trade relations with Russia and Belarus and begin the process of denying Russia access to the World Trade Organization. They're trying to turn, they're trying to turn things up as they should, as they should. Right now, we are dealing with um, a scourge. We are dealing with a war criminal. Dealing with a war criminal. And they are really, really taking their time. They are really handling Putin with what I'm calling, you know, kid gloves. They are being so nice to him. So nice to him, and it is uh, something that cannot continue too long. Oil prices jump as the conflict in Ukraine deepens. That's not a surprise. Something that we expected to happen. Definitely. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back with more of the show. We're going to talk about these oil prices jumping the Ukraine war Started by Putin and Russia. More after this. Stay tuned. It's the Diamond Cake Show here at onfiretelevision.com and the Diamond Cake Show.com. Hey, it's your girl, Janice Chantel. Listen, my entrepreneurial journey has taught me one very important thing, that I am no punk. This past year, I've shed things that no longer serve me the way I feel fit, and I'm only doing things that bring me joy. Janice Chantel Wax Experience has been my baby for the past year, and it has grown so much over the past year. I am super excited to celebrate my one year in business and my new life. I look forward to seeing everything that I've envisioned for myself and my business. Get the wax, sis. Welcome back to the Diamond K Show, of course, on FireTelevision.com, the Diamond K Show. Dot com. The price of oil jumped more than $10 a barrel as the conflict in Ukraine has deepened. Of course, mounting calls for harsher sanctions on Russia continue. They haven't happened yet. We need even harsher sanctions. And I understand they've already sanctioned them, Russia, pretty heavy. But there's been talk, weak talk. In America, oh, maybe you're sanctioning Russia too much and you're going to back Putin against the wall and, and maybe he's going to uh, drop the nuclear bomb. Shut up. Right? Just shut up. This cow towing to Putin is how we got here in the first place. I'm not saying that we have World War III, but we have to stop backing down from this bully who's bluffing. And if he ain't bluffing, if he ain't bluffing, we need to hold him to task. He's not a good military, um, uh, you know, uh, organizer, as you can see by the way this fight is going. He's not. So uh, oil briefly surged over $10 to nearly $130 a barrel earlier today. U.S. crude was up nearly $9 at more than $124 a barrel. The surge followed a warning from Putin 
that Ukrainian statehood um, is, is in peril as Russian forces uh, battle in strategic locations. They are trying to take this country over. They had a temporary ceasefire, two of them, both sides blaming the other. And what we have is the potential of food shortages. We have the actuality of fuel and energy prices rising. Gasoline prices in the U.S. are already up. Biden administration has yet to call for an oil import ban from Russia. And you know he doesn't want to do that. In a letter to Democrats last night, Nancy Pelosi said that the legislation under consideration is tough. And it's going to, the legislation would repeal normal trade regulations with Russia and Belarus. All right? Pelosi said that the House would also empower the Biden administration to raise tariffs on Russian imports. So they're not talking about cutting the trade off. They're talking about raising the, the tariffs and making it more uh, costly for them. Congress intends to approve the Biden administration's request for $10 billion in humanitarian, military, and economic support for Ukraine. Now, as part of the omnibus government funding legislation this week, you can expect that to happen. No problem. What? We need 10 million? 10, I'm sorry, 10 billion with the B for Ukraine? No problem. And I understand why they're doing it. But when that money is for something for home, oh, they're going to fight that. But Ukraine, okay, 10 billion, like it ain't nothing. Like it ain't nothing. Uh, but it is a lot. And uh, I definitely, as I said, respect and stand with the people of Ukraine. I think that Putin needs to be taken down. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on FireTelevision.com, the Diamond K Show.com. I am here daily, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. Amazon, you just type in the Diamond K Show. See you guys later on today.